So now I wanted to do a problem with the Super Bowl. Suppose we have a Super Bowl, big, you know, they don't sell huge Super Bowls right here. I don't know why. I think it's because if I dropped it, we'd all have to run right here. But, but here, this is the biggest Super Bowl I had, and I wanted a little Super Bowl. And suppose I were to set the little one on top of the big one and drop it right here from, say, this high up, and ask, how high does the little one go right here? How high does this one? Is it going to go twice as high, three times as high? How high is it going to go? So before I, I try to drop it, I think we'll try to solve it first, and then we'll drop it right there. So we'll assume that this one, I weighed the two. The bottom one was 62 grams. The top one was 9 grams right here. If one was a lot heavier than the other, it would be a lot easier for me to calculate this. But, but let's just calculate this, let's assume that that's the height that I'm dropping it from. And I want to know, given the little h, how high does this guy shoot up right here? Well, when I let this thing go right here, what's going to happen? They're both going to drop together. Why? Because everything falls with g right here. But I'm going to look at it just before the big one hits right here. This one's going downward right here. And if we wanted, let's just look at the big ball right here. We can just say the we could use your constant acceleration equations, or we could just use the energy. When Just looking at the big ball right here, it started from rest, so you had big M, G, H. And then when it got to the bottom, all that potential went into kinetic. It all went into one half big M V squared. Well, I can solve, get rid of the M's, and so we got the velocity. That is the square root of 2 G H. So that's the speed that this is going down. This is going down with a speed of the square root of 2gh. This one is also coming down with the same speed. It dropped h2, and it doesn't depend on the mass, so he's also coming down with the square root of 2gh. But now the big one, there's going to be a little gap in there. The big one's going to hit the ground first and then bounce back up right here. And now you might say, what's the speed that the Super Bowl is going to bounce back up? Well, if it's a nice, perfect Super Bowl, it's going to bounce at the same speed it came in. It pretty much goes back up to the same height. So this is also the speed that it bounced back up. So we have the big ball going up at this speed, and we have the little ball coming down at that speed. So I'm going to draw that right over here. So we have the big ball going up at a speed of this is big M, going up at V equals the square root of 2G H. And we have the little one still coming down at V equals the square root of 2G H. Okay, and now we can look at the momentum before the collision right here, the momentum before. And then afterwards, what's going to happen afterwards? This one, the big one's going to shoot up at some other speed. That's called VA prime. And this one's going to shoot up at VB prime right here. So if we just look at conservation of momentum right here, the momentum before, we're going to call up positive. We call up positive right there. Then this is a positive momentum, so we got big M times the speed, which is the square root of 2GH. So this is my momentum equation. P times the square root, M times the square root, and then minus, because this one's coming down, minus little m times the square root of 2GH. And that should equal the momentum afterwards, they're both going up because this is a lot heavier than, than that. It's, I'm assuming it's heading upward right here. It's big M V A prime plus little m V B prime. Both going this way. So there is my momentum equation right here. Now the other equation, we said this is an elastic collision, so we could use our energy equation. But it would be a lot easier. I don't want to use the energy equation. This is a one-dimensional problem, and it's elastic. So I'm just going to use the relative speed equation right here. The relative speed equation is you get on one of them, 
So if I were to jump on this one right here, it'd be a little ant or something, and I ask, how fast does this come towards me? Well, if I'm heading this way at that V, and this is heading toward me at V, the speed that I'd see it coming at me is twice that speed. So you'd say twice the square root of 2GH is equal to, and now if you're over here on this side, how fast do you see that go away from you? Well, this one's going faster. You can't go, you can't go pass him up right here. So it would be VB prime minus VA prime. So over here on this side, it's VB prime minus VA prime. So there is my two equations, a lot easier than using that one half MV squared. What I want to solve for is VB prime. I want to eliminate the VA prime. So maybe out of this equation, I'll solve for VA prime and plug it up into here. So if I solve for VA prime, I'll bring that over here, take this back. I'm just going to swap these two right here. So we get VA prime is equal to VB prime minus VB prime minus 2 square root of 2GH. 2 square root of 2GH. Okay, and now I'm going to plug that right into here. So I'll just take this and put it right into here. So over here, it looks like I can factor out the square root of 2GH. I'll factor that out, square root of 2GH. And I'm left with big M minus little m. And that equals VB, it equals uh, big M times this. So it equals big M times this. So we got big M VB prime minus big M times this minus big M times 2 square root of 2GH. So there is this term plus little m VB prime plus little m VB prime. Okay, so now I have one unknown here, VB prime right here. Uh, well, let's bring this term over to this side right here. And you notice right here, I can, since I have a square root of 2 GH, and when I now factor it out of the three, this term and that term, I got 2 GH. We got big M, but I'm going to bring over another 2 big M, so that's 3 big M minus little m. And over here, I'm just going to factor out the VB prime. So VB prime is equal. Sorry, VB prime times big M plus little m. Big M plus little m. So we got VB prime. VB prime is equal to, just divide this out. So we got the square root of 2GH times 3 big M minus little m all over big M plus little m right here. Okay, that told me the speed. It didn't tell me how high up it goes. But if I know how fast this thing's going, I can get its height right here. Because all of his kinetic energy goes into all of his kinetic, one half mvb prime squared, all goes into potential when he gets all the way at the highest point, which is mg, say, big H. Because he's going to go up a height of big H right there. The m's drop out. So H is just VB prime squared all over 2G. So all I have to do with this is square it and divide it by 2G, and that'll tell me how high up it goes. So H, so I have to square this. If I square this, this becomes 2G little h. This is all squared, so you get 3 big M minus little m squared all over big M plus little m squared. And then we also have the 2G right there, the 2G. The 2Gs drop out. And so the big H equals how high up it goes is how far you dropped it from. H, little h is how far I dropped it from times 3 big M minus little m, 3 big M minus little m squared.
squared. Well, actually, why don't we keep it like that? We'll put the square outside of everything. Big M plus little m squared. So this is how high up the ball, sh the little ball should go right here. Now you'll notice that if the little ball was insignificant compared to the big ball, if this were huge and this were tiny, then we could have probably just gotten rid of this and you would have just had three squared, it would have gone nine times higher right here. I don't have that case right here. I weighed the two, one was nine grams and one was 62. So this one would be three times 62, let's just say 180, minus nine, let's just say 170. That's close enough right there. The bottom, you add them up, add them up, uh, that's 71. <laughs> 71, how about if I just say 70? 170 over 70 squared. Well, this is about, <laughs> This is about two, it's more than two, it's like almost two and a half. Two and a half squared is like, like seven times bigger. So I'd expect that the H to go about seven times higher than I dropped it right here. So let's just see if that works. Hopefully I can get that to balance right here. That's the tough part right here, to get this thing to balance right there. But I'm just gonna drop it from about this high so about seven of them, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't want to sit there going like this right here. You see how high up that went right there? So, so just let it. So it shoots up pretty good right there. But you'll notice with, with uh, what if you had three balls right here? What if I had, say, what's three balls? Let's say you have a basketball. A medium-sized ball. I don't know, some small rubber ball right here. And then you put a golf ball on top right here. Right there. Now, how fast is that one going to take off right there? Well, let's go back to the case. If this is a lot bigger than this, this is going to go how much faster right here? Where do we say the speed was? We said the speed... The speed is about, the speed's going to be about triple the, well, actually, let's just come back to here. This thing right here, we already said is going to go about nine times as high right here. And if this were a lot smaller than this one, this would go nine times higher. This one right here, if this is a lot smaller than this, and this is a lot smaller than this, this would go 49 times higher right here. About 49 times higher. So that means if you ever play basketball and you get beat real bad, what you all you have to do is say, yeah, but can you do this right there and see if you can line that up and let it go. Just get ready to run right here because uh, they're not going to like that right here. What if you had four of them on there? Put a little BB on there. Then this would be over 250 times higher. And if you put a fifth one on there, it would be over a thousand times higher. So what I have right here, I have something called, it's called the, the Ninja Ball Multi-Stage Vertical Collision Balls right here. So you notice they're not a lot smaller than the previous one. If they were, this would even work better right here. But, uh, and then they put this metal thing in here because they don't want all the balls to go flying. They only want the one to go flying right here. And so... So we can, we can drop this and this thing, it won't quite go a thousand times higher because they're not a lot bigger than the other right here, but it goes pretty good right here. And so you should be able to see that in the video right there. This thing, when you're building things, sometimes you have to worry about this. There was a, a telescope that people had for kids right here, these, these uh, telescopes that you pulled out and since they're collapsible, they go inside of each other, the eyepiece and so on. And they didn't realize it, but if you dropped it on its edge, so, so the, the telescope was inside the pieces right here and pulled out. But if you dropped it on its edge, it kind of did the same thing and the little piece on the inside shot out right here. And so, 
So you have to think about these things. You're never building it so that people will drop it, but sometimes you have to worry about this. Okay, so again, relative speed in one dimension made the problem a lot easier.